I do recall Alvin Arnold, Manuka Hinare, very well indeed, because he was one of that early group of, uh, you might say, pioneering students at St Paul's College. He was a person who had that integrity of sincerity in everything he did and also conviction. As I followed his career in working in the church, both in Auckland and Wellington later on, I saw that develop and I've really come to admire him and appreciate the person that has developed so beautifully, so magnificently. I have watched his career with interest. I did have an instance last year where I was leading a health ethics committee. I had been serving on it for nine years as chair. I wanted to retire. I wanted to find a good replacement who ticked all the boxes in terms of academic qualifications, recognition within the community, leadership to my many sectors of the community. Um, and this is a position which is appointed by the Minister of Health and has to be uh, approved by Cabinet. And um, I talked to Monica and we did it. The college had a very big influence uh, in, in shaping Manuka. Uh, Manuka was a, a prefect, a, a bit of a sports star, including the first 15. Uh, during holidays, Manuka had a labouring job with Windstones. He continued this on uh, leaving college with school cert, labouring factory, uh, factory work, uh, because that's what his family and neighbours did, and we're shaped by the expectations of those around us, right? And one day the dispatcher called him out and asked what he was doing labouring when he had school C. And he was sent down to Winston's head office in the city, introduced to computer administration and time and motion studies, would always say yes, whatever was the task. All the while he was attending night classes to improve his education, showing great drive for a young man. Uh, these were the days of compulsory military training. He completed his basic training and specialised in surveying, an important role used for sighting guns, ensuring that the shells drop on the enemy and not on uh, your side. Uh, surveying was a useful skill. He put to good use at Winston's. Uh, age, in his uh, late 20s, he was involved in the Catholic Youth Movement, worked for the Auckland Catholic uh, Diocese, establishing Catholic Youth Movement in Auckland, moved to Wellington for a role at the New Zealand Catholic Bishops, working on programs that included Corso, Freedom from Hunger, travelled widely with the church and other sponsored humanity programs, included visiting the Vatican and meeting Pope John Paul, the second met Pope John Paul II again in New Zealand and impressed him by greeting him with a hongi and presented the Black Madonna. In early 30s, he commenced his studies at Victoria University. So this was a singular man who went to university uh, in his early 30s. His first three years spent failing more exams than he passed. But um, the perseverance paid off. There's a message there. Graduated with a double major in Māori studies became a lecturer in Māori studies at Victoria University, where he is beloved and admired. Sir James Henare, over a cup of tea, encouraged him to complete a PhD. He graduated with a PhD age 63. It's a, a remarkable story and a beautiful story. A true lifetime learner. A man who took stock. A slow learner, a cheeky bugger. I don't know who said that. But you'll be getting a detention. Uh, has rich knowledge and experience uh, of bicultural governance and management, continually uh, in demand advising government departments and local authorities. Manuka is Associate Professor of Māori Studies at Auckland University, awarded the 1990 Commemoration Medal uh, for Contribution to Māori Studies. Of course, that was our Sesquik centenary year. And uh, not bad for a boy who left school aged 15 and told by the brothers at the time, no good will become of that man. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Manuka Henare. What an extraordinary life. And you, I mean, what an extraordinary life you are living. When you left here at 15, did, did, you, did you understand that you, your trajectory was upwards, or did you have no idea what you were capable of yet? Uh, no, I didn't have a plan uh, when I left here, other than to... Um, become a labourer and school labourer, because that's what my family background was in. Mm. So um, straight after sixth form, I turned up at Winstone's at the top of Simon Street, stood in the queue at seven o'clock and waited for a job. And you, and you got a job, and you did the job, 
but you also went to night school. What was that about? What were your dreams when you were going to night school? Uh, well, that was about, I like, happened to like learning. And so for many years, in those first few years, I always did a night class. And at that time, I was uh, Winstone, so I looked at and got a chance to go into head office. And so I did company law, strategic planning, and you know, all the other commercial stuff, um, and um, economics. And, um, but I have to say, um, I failed more exams than I ever <laughs> passed in my life. And, and I think that's where the slogan, gee, he must be a slow war, uh, learner or, or he doesn't learn anything at all. <laughs> and, and, and yet we know you're being modest and you are, you are now a celebrated and acclaimed and revered academic. And so that's very special, having earned that position right. From, 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 from a background that probably uh, didn't suggest to anyone, and clearly not the brothers at the school, that you were heading in that direction. What do you remember of the school? What do you remember of your time here? Um, well, I, I, I believe strongly uh, uh, in St. Paul, and and St. Paul and St. Paul was, uh, it was a, a lovely name to have for a college, and I do think that the spirit of St. Paul, which I learnt at the college, has stayed with me all my life. And what is the sp spirit of St. Paul that stayed with you? How do you describe that? Well, St. Paul was interesting because he wasn't St. Peter, in other words, he wasn't the number one apostle. Uh, he was the apostle who had the difficult job of converting the non um, the non-Jews. All the other apostles in the early stages uh, were staying around Israel and Hebrew and then Hebrew territory. And um, I was taken with this character who had a, to go to a country we now know as Bulgaria and and work on the other side of the Mediterranean. And um, I reckon that's uh, some of that spirit of looking past what's obvious and look for the more difficult complex, that's far more fun. Mm. Yeah. It's crazy, but it's fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Can you, I don't... Rocky? Can you call the boys in? Can you get the Rocky? Can you the bo I can, can you get the boys in if they're out the back? Is that is that all right? Manuka, I want I want you to talk to these boys. Now these are these are different boys, and they have from from our childhood, and they have different aspirations. They're probably not going to queue up at Winstones for a job, right? Many of them are off to university next year. But I, I wonder what is your advice to them? What would you say as they are in, in, in nearing the end of their life as St Paul's boys and heading out into the world? What would you say to them? Well, I was to learn from an elder, Sir James Hennady. If you're not sure about what you want to do now, always look to the tumatu or to the moana. Always look to the horizon over the ocean. And that's what you'll see, what you, that you'll find your vision there. So I got rather used to doing a lot of gazing at the horizon <laughs> and seascapes. <laughs> and uh, I don't know what I was looking for. I think I was looking for that special zap you get from God like in lightning. Well, and like St. Paul, he got zapped, fell off his horse. Well, I couldn't fall off my bloody horse. And, uh, and I uh, tried every trick under the sun to get zapped. And the, and the lightning seemed to miss me. It hit someone else. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, so, uh, so I think... Um, Somewhere along the line, I, I hung in there, and I think God must have got tired. <laughs> and he picked the hopeless cause when he saw one, I think. <laughs> it got worse. And, uh, uh, but I've, uh, but that, 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 the love of God um, was, uh, a, in my mind, a key element I got from St. Paul's College. What, what, what? Yeah, so, uh, Kieran's giving you a well-deserved round of applause. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you this. Dr. Manuka Hinare, uh, tell me how you feel as the recipient of that. Um, well, it makes um, fifth and sixth form look boring. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, all, I, all I can say is, I'm glad I survived because I wouldn't be here tonight. <laughs> we, 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 we're glad you survived. I, I do think, I think you're being very modest. And, and I went to Vic, and I know you, and I know your reputation, and I know how acclaimed and respected you are at that university. But I think, boys, this is a story of tenacity, and it's a story of not giving up, and it's a story of having dreams, and actually we're going to talk about that uh, in respect of Mark Graham. And sometimes you don't win, right? 
And actually, winning's the easy thing, because when you win, life falls into place. It's what you do when you don't, isn't it, that defines you. Right. Well, I remember one of the, uh, in the first 15, it's in Paul's, um, Brother Albert, I think, was the coach at the time, and he used to say to us, because we were playing all the big schools like Sacred Heart and uh, uh, Mount Albert, Auckland Grammar, Kings, and he would say um, to us, um, I don't mind us losing, make sure that they do not enjoy their victory. <laughs> and, and I always remembered that, that little saying all my life. And, um, and that's what I teach my students. If you're going to make a submission to the city council, or you're going to try and change the policy, um, make, give them hell. Make sure they do not enjoy their victory. Because the consequences are, and my students have told me this, a week later, they would get a ring from the mayor. Or they get a ring from somebody and who, who um, uh, realised that you do, there are certain characters you do not want as your enemy. <laughs> you want them as a friend. Dr. Manuka Henry uh, Hinare, the, uh, the, uh, the school is very proud of you. And thank you, and, and thank you for being here this evening. Thank and, and thank you for honouring the memory of the school and being such a fine old boy in the years since you have left it. And thank you all. Ladies and gentlemen, Manuka Hinare.